Hey everyone, Mark here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to land the A310 in Microsoft Flight Simulator with an ILS approach. But what's going to be different about this video is that we're going to be taking off and landing at the same airport so that you can practice this type of landing in a short 15 minute round trip. If you've never tried airliners before, or maybe you have and you just didn't like it or found it too difficult, this technique can be a great way to get introduced to them without getting bogged down into too many details. You can use the techniques that I'm going to explain in this video to practice ILS landings, but you could also use it to practice RNAV and localizers too. And lastly, I want to acknowledge the viewer who gave me the idea for this video, whose username is Dave Slow. All right, with all of that said, let's get going. I'm starting on the runway at LAX to streamline things. I'm going to set a few things up in the airplane so that I can fly a departure procedure and then directly join an approach and fly an ILS down to another runway at LAX. I'm going to start by setting my departure and arrival into the box. And to do that, all I've got to do is go to the init page, type in KLAX slash KLAX, and then press on the top right entry at the top where it says from to to load it in. I'm going to leave everything else on this page blank because we don't really need it. And I'm going to go to the flight plan page from here. From here, I'm going to click on my departure airport, which is the LAX entry right at the top. Click on SID, and then I'm going to pick my departure runway, which is 25 right. If you're not using LAX for your flight, you're going to actually have to do a little bit of research at this point. Ideally, what you're looking for is a departure procedure that's going to take you around the airport, just like if you are flying a much larger traffic pattern. For LAX, the DOTS 2 departure fits that bill because as you can see, it first heads south and then it goes east, almost parallel to the runways. So I'm going to pick that one in the list of departures. Next, it's asking me to pick a transition, but I'm actually not going to pick one for this because if you have a look on the chart, both of these would take me well out of the LAX area and I don't really need that for this very short flight. So all I'm going to do is press insert at this point to insert my departure as is. Next, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of my flight plan and then click on LAX again because this time it's my arrival airport and I'm going to press star. I want to fly the ILS to runway 24 right, so I'll pick that one first. There are three different initial approach fixes that I can pick from, and live-in is about 23 nautical miles from the airport, which is just about what I'm looking for. So I'm going to pick that one, and I'll choose none for the star, because again, I want to stay in the area of the airport, and I want to go straight from my departure procedure to my approach and skip the arrival. I'll put myself into plan mode now and I'm going to extend the range to about 30 nautical miles so I can walk through all of the steps of my flight plan. You can see from the departure point it loops around to the south side of the airport until I get to the dots intersection which is where I run into a flight plan discontinuity. All I've got to do is clear the discontinuity because what I want to do is go from dots directly to my initial approach fix, which is the next waypoint right after the discontinuity. So all I do is press the clear button and press on the button that's aligned with the flight plan discontinuity. And now my flight plan goes straight from the dots waypoint to my initial approach fix that I picked. That gives me a nice complete loop that I can fly from departure all the way back to the runway. And the best thing about it is if you look at the navigation display, I'm never more than 30 nautical miles from the airport. So I'm going to be able to do this in about 15 minutes flat. There's only a couple more details to set up before takeoff. And I'm going to go to the EFB to set up my weight and balance. I'll typically put only about three or four people in the airplane and about 20,000 pounds of fuel for this type of flight. My goal is really to just go around and come back and land, so I really don't want a full airplane. And you want to make sure that you have as little fuel as possible so that you can go around a couple of times if you need to, but you don't want to be too heavy that you can't come back around and land easily. With that said, I'm going to take note of my CG, which is 28.2, go back to the box, go onto the progress page, press the fuel prediction button, and here I can type in my 28.2 and load it into the CG. I'm also quickly going to calculate my V-speed since it's going to help the autopilot do its thing on takeoff. For the runway length and heading, I'm going to use the default value that it says when I click on each of those fields. And for everything else, I'm going to leave the defaults except for the altimeter, which I can get the current value for it by going to the weather tab. The only other detail to fill in is the weight, which is in thousands of pounds, and I can get the real value by going to the weight and balance page and looking at the gross weight number. With all of that set, I can press the calculate button and it's telling me that my V1 and VR speed is 135 and my V2 speed is 170. 
I'm gonna go back to the box to set those up in the takeoff approach menu. And all I'm gonna do is type in the number, so in this case, 135, and loading it up next to the number where it says V1 and VR. You'll notice for V2 that it actually says you input it into the FCU, and that's actually just the autopilot panel. So I'm gonna go there now, and to set my V2 speed, all I'm gonna do is turn the speed dial to set it to 170, and it'll be set in the box as well. While I'm here, I'm also going to set my altitude where I'm going to level off at with the autopilot. If I look at my approach chart, I can see that it says I should be at 6,000 feet once I get to the live-in waypoint, so I'm gonna use that as my AP altitude. I'm also going to turn nav and profile mode on, and that's going to make the plane follow my flight plan and let it decide how quickly it climbs to my level off altitude at 6,000 feet. The last thing to do is set the flaps to the first position, turn the parking brake off, and I am pretty much ready to go. For takeoff, I'm going to start by applying about 50% throttle, let the engine stabilize, and then I'll go to full throttle. The other thing I like to do at this point as I'm accelerating down the runway is enable the auto throttle by pressing the button on the left, and like that the engine power is under airplane control and I don't have to worry about adjusting the throttles at all until I'm on short final. I'm at rotation speed now, so I'm going to start pulling back to get airborne, and I'm going to follow the flight directors up to about 15 degrees of bank, and I'm going to bring the landing gear as soon as I feel that I've got a positive rate of climb. I'm going to bring the flaps up as I go by S speed, and then I'll hand fly the airplane up to a few thousand feet. We're going to get back to the video here in just a second, but I do want to remind you to hit the like button if you haven't already, and consider subscribing as well. I publish a new video every two weeks with tips, tricks, and tutorials for Microsoft Flight Simulator, and your support helps to keep the channel growing. Alright, I'm at about 2000 now, so I'm going to turn the autopilot on. Because I set nav and profile before takeoff, it's automatically going to follow my flight plan, and it's going to continue climbing up to 6000 feet for me. Even though the autopilot is on, I'm still keeping an eye on it to make sure that I'm still situationally aware so I know where I'm at at all times, because this is a very short flight, I'm going to have to turn around and prepare the approach really quickly. It won't take long for the plane to get to my approach altitude of 6,000 feet because it's going to use a pretty aggressive climb rate with profile mode, and once it does get there, you're going to see it's going to accelerate to 250 knots since that's our max speed below 10,000 feet. I'm still just following the departure procedure at this point, but this is where I'm actually going to start setting up my approach, because once I reach the end of the departure procedure, you'll remember we're going straight back to the approach, and we need to be set up in time. The first thing I'll do is set the ILS frequency for 24 right, and looking at the chart, it says to use 108.5, so to set that, all I've got to do is go to the panel that's right next to the McDo, right where it says ILS, I'm going to turn the dials to get it to 108.5. I'll also set the inbound course of the ILS right next to the frequency. In newer airplanes like the A320, I think this gets set automatically, but because the A310 is a little bit older, you need to input a little bit more information to it so it can do what it needs to do. There's two more little details to tell it for the approach. The first, I have to go back to the box and I have to go into the takeoff approach page to enter the minimum descent altitude. There's no weather to deal with today, so it's not really a factor, but normally the MDA is where you would decide if you're going to continue for landing or if you're going to go around. The MDA for this approach is 322 feet, so I'll enter that into the scratch pad and load it next to the MDA field. The last thing to tell the airplane about is the landing height of the airfield, which in this case is about 100 feet. I'm not 100% sure what it uses this for, but I think it's for auto land scenarios where you're letting the airplane fly itself all the way to the ground so that it knows when to flare, but don't quote me on that. Another thing that I'm going to do now that I actually tend to forget about a lot is to reset the landing gear to the middle or off position. Like that, once I cycle the controls for the landing gear, it's actually going to extend rather than just go to the off position. It can be very easy to forget about, and before you know it, you're way too low with your landing gear still up. I'm coming up on the dots waypoint now, which if you recall is the last waypoint of the departure procedure, at which point the plane is going to turn straight to go to my initial approach fix. I'm still at 6,000 feet since that's the altitude I need to be at once I reach the initial approach fix, and I'm still in profile mode, which means that my airspeed is about 250 knots still, which is fine for now, but once I get a little bit closer to the IAF, let's say around 10 nautical miles, that's where I'm going to start driving the speed down. I'm 
I'm coming up on the initial approach fix now, so I'm gonna bring my speed back to anywhere between 180 and 200 knots. And like that, I have some leeway in case I forget to do something or I screw something up because everything's just gonna happen a little bit slower. I'm also gonna switch the navigation mode on the pilot side into ILS which is gonna show the localizer information on the bottom of the primary flight display and the glide slope information on the right hand side of the PFD. I'm also gonna turn localizer mode on on the autopilot so that once I get closer to the initial approach fix, it's automatically gonna turn to intercept it for me. Now, because I turned the speed down manually, the plane switched into altitude hold mode, and if I were to leave everything like this, even though it will still intercept the glide slope, it won't start descending. For that reason, I'm gonna set it to 6,000 feet, but I'm not gonna go level change or profile descent on it. I'm just reducing the number so that when it does intercept the glide slope, that it can start descending. I'll usually go to flaps 1 at this point because I'm flying a much shorter version of the approach. I'm not following a star followed by an approach. I'm going straight to the middle point of the approach and I want to make sure to be set up early enough. When the localizer starts coming in, you're going to see in the PFB1 that the diamond's going to start centering itself. But you're also going to see that the mode is going to switch to lock star, which is telling you that it captured the signal and it's turning to intercept it. This is the point where I'm going to enable land mode and you can see that it's going to become active in just a couple of seconds in the PFD. Once the plane establishes itself on the final approach course, that's when I usually go to flaps 2 and I start watching for when it's going to intercept the glide slope. The diamond is very slowly going to come down from the top and once it reaches the middle of the gauge, the airplane is going to start descending along it and that's the point where I go to flaps 3. At this point, I need to check what my final approach speed is going to be. I can see that by going into the box, going into the takeoff approach page if I'm not there already, and you can see that VAP for this flight is 121 knots. I'm still flying way faster than that, but I'm still a good 12 to 15 nautical miles out, so that's okay, but I am going to start driving my speed down very slowly in about 10 knot increments. If I needed to lose more speed quickly, what I could also do is just use a little bit of speed brakes on final here just to slow things down a little bit faster, but in my case I'm going to be totally fine just continuing to dial that speed back very slowly. Once I get the 10 nautical miles from the airport, I'll bring the flaps to full first and then I'm going to bring the gear down. Make sure to do it in that order because if you put gear before going to full flaps first, the airplane is going to yell at you. It's at this point as well, once all of that is done, that I'm going to bring my speed down to my final approach speed by turning the dial to 120 knots and letting the airplane handle the power adjustments for me. As you get close to the MDA, you're going to be able to choose between three different ways to fly the last few miles. The first option is to let the airplane do what's called an auto land, and this can be a lot of fun to try in bad weather with low visibility. All you've got to do for that one is just flip AP2 on and at that point in the primary flight display it'll now say CAT3 and dual and with that set you don't have to do anything else. The airplane's going to handle everything for you. All you've got to do is set your throttles to idle and the airplane's even going to flare for you when it gets to the ground. However, if you're like me, you probably like getting your hands a little bit dirty when you're coming into land, so I first start by turning off the autopilot to gain control of the airplane as I descend the last little bit to the runway. You'll probably notice once you turn the autopilot off that the beeping is going to continue to tell you that the autopilot's been disabled. The way to stop that from happening is to just press the red disconnect button that's on the yoke. Now, although I've turned the autopilot off and I have control of the airplane, I still have the auto throttle on, which means if I move my physical throttles, it still won't do anything. To disable the auto throttle, first start by looking at what the N1 gauge is doing. Mine is reading around 50 to 60%, so I'm gonna adjust my physical control throttle axis to be at around the 50 to 60% mark. Like that, once I disable the auto throttle by pressing the button, there isn't going to be a large change in how much power that the engine wants to develop. You shouldn't need to make a huge change in power when you're on short final anyways, but remember that these engines have a long spool up time. If you do decide you have to go around, decide a little bit earlier than you would with a modern airliner because it takes some time for them to spool up. What I suggest for beginners who are learning to fly this airplane is to keep the autopilot on until you are on very short final and just keep practicing it and disable the autopilot further and further out every time.
When you hear the 30 foot call out, that's when you can start a very gentle flare and you can let the main gears touch down first and as soon as they do you can go to reverse thrust. A lot of people like to focus on your descent rate once you touch down on the ground, but you really don't need to worry about this at all. Just focus on making sure that you touch down inside of the landing zone, so inside all of the dashes that are on the runway, as well as making sure that you land and stay on the runway center line. And just like that, we've covered basically everything that you need to know to be able to fly an ILS approach and a full flight really with the A310. I hope you picked up some useful tidbits in this video and if you did, please make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to get more similar content. I'll see you soon.